All right, so the long awaited how I edit music videos. Technically, this is a part three and you guys have been asking for this video for a very long time. So I'm very excited to finally put this out there. So the genre of this music video is rap or hip hop. And I do want to mention guys that if there are unanswered questions in this tutorial, because I'm not gonna go through the entire music video edit from beginning to end. I'm just gonna give you like my tips and tricks to speed up your editing process and just do it in a very efficient and professional way. Now, I will say that I actually do have an online music video course that I sell. You can check it out in the link in the description. It's called the Learn Freelance Filmmaking Music Video Course. And I actually have over a little over 20 Final Cut Pro 10 super, super in-depth lessons in that course, as well as for Premiere Pro. And I'm currently working on a DaVinci Resolve section that is coming very soon. So if you wanna take not only your editing skills to the next level with Final Cut Pro 10, as well as literally 100 plus other music video lessons that are in that course you can click the link in description and purchase it for a very very affordable price all right guys so the first thing you're gonna want to do is obviously import all of your music video files into a hard drive don't edit off of a desktop unless you have like a one terabyte desktop I highly recommend that you edit off the hard drive so right here this is what you see my Roll Z new two terabyte hard drive so here we are inside of my hard drive now when I import all my files from my SD card onto my hard drive, I make a folder called, you know, the music video folder. So this has all of the shots that we captured for this music video, okay? On top of the files, I actually imported something that we didn't capture on set, which is the mastered audio, preferably a WAV file of the, um, of the song. Okay, so you're gonna open up Final Cut Pro 10, right? And this is a really quick way to do it. You're gonna go to File, New, library you're going to click on your hard drive right here and you're going to type in the artist song and names and what i do is actually i highlight this go Control c to copy click save file new event this time okay command v to copy click ok so now we've created an event now i go back to file new project so you want to hit from the bottom to the top okay command v again and then now you pick your video format. So I shot this in a mixture of 4K and 1080p. So all of my 24 FPS shots and 60 FPS shots were shot in 4K, but I do have some 1080p 120 FPS slow motion shots that were obviously shot in 1080. So different from 4K to 1080. So a lot of people ask me, what video format do I make my timeline? I always say, just make it 4K and the resolution 3840 by 2160. That's 4K resolution, okay? Even if you shot everything in 1080p, I still suggest that you upscale to 4K. It doesn't hurt. So now we have created a project file. So when we click OK and we go back into our hard drive, check this out. It's created a project. So if I back out of my Final Cut Pro 10, at least I have my project file here and I can pick up from where I left off in the edit or make changes in the future if need be. Once you are in your project here, okay? So what you're gonna do next is click this little drop down right here, all right? And this is gonna be your keyword collection drop down, okay? So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click new keyword collection, super easy. And I'm gonna name this new keyword collection performance scenes. So performance scenes, keyword collection, I'm gonna drag all of my performance scenes. So any scene where the artist is singing along to the song gets placed in the performance scene section. Whether you filmed it in 24 FPS or 60 FPS, it gets put in the performance scene section, okay? Now next, I'm gonna right click again, create another keyword collection, and this is gonna be titled B-roll. So this is gonna be your 60 FPS clips, potentially 24 FPS clips that are maybe intro scenes, or higher frame rate clips such as 1080p 120 fps or if your camera shoots 4k 120 fps you'd place it in the b-roll scene section i have all of my scenes here this is from the very first scene to the end all right so obviously just looking at a clip it is literally impossible to tell whether or not it is filmed in 24 fps or 60 fps those are the two ones that are literally impossible to tell if you just look at a clip so to be able to tell what frame rate you filmed that clip in you're gonna go to the top right here click the information icon and it is going to spit out the resolution and the frame rate that it was filmed in okay so here we have 59.94 which means that i 
filmed this in 4K 60 FPS. Because I shot this music video, I know that this is a performance scene, but it was also shot in 60 FPS. So it's a 60 FPS performance scene. So I have the option to use this as B-roll as well, or slow-mo a performance scene down. For these types of clips where it's a performance scene that is shot in 60 FPS, this will be placed in the B-roll keyword collection as well as the performance scene keyword collection. That's important, okay? So we're gonna put it into the performance scene as well as the B-roll, that simple. Now we have another one here, again, 60 FPS, B-roll and performance scene. Scrolling again, now this was shot in 60 FPS and this is a B-roll scene. So it drags into B-roll. This is another B-roll scene. Now we have the mastered audio. This is super important because it is going to enable you to edit extremely fast in Final Cut Pro 10 for music videos. The mastered audio must be placed inside of the performance scene tab. That is super, super, super important. All right guys, so now we have a 24 FPS performance scene. So this gets placed in the performance scene tab only, all right? So I'm gonna go through right now and just organize all of my clips. All right guys, so I've gone through all of the scenes that I've shot for this music video and I've just organized all of the B-roll clips and the performance scenes. Now organizing the performance scenes in its own keyword collection is going to enable us to create a multicam clip which is going to speed up our editing process significantly and really clean up our timeline and organizing all the b-roll shots is key in my opinion for saving time when editing for the sole purpose of having easy access to your b-roll scenes so you don't have to go to your main event and scroll through and try to find all the 60 fps or 120 fps clips all of your b-roll shots your slow motion clips your layover shots can be found in that b-roll keyword collection Okay, so next up we have multicam clips. So this is very easy to do, okay? We're gonna go to performance scenes and what we're gonna do is click on this little icon right here next to all clips. I'm gonna click on that and now it's gonna give me a drop down of every single performance scene that I've filmed, whether it's in 24 FPS or 60 FPS. All of my performance scenes where the artist is singing along to the song are placed in this folder. So I'm going to shift click all of the clips, including the mastered version of the song. I'm gonna right click, create new multicam clip, okay? So I'm gonna title this, Pimpton Multicam. So these are my settings for the multicam clips. Now I get a lot of comments on my other multicam clip tutorials and music video editing tutorials that for some reason the multicam just doesn't work and it just places all of the clips onto one timeline. I don't know, take a look at this, pause the screen, look back at your Final Cut Pro 10 timeline or your multicam clip before you create it and copy everything that I've set up here except for this here, your frame rate, you're gonna wanna put to 23.98 and 4K resolution. But other than that guys, I've never had issues with. So maybe it's just in your settings, I have no idea, but this will spit out a perfect multicam clip. I'm just gonna put full multicam, okay? And I'm gonna click okay. Now, sometimes this can take a while, depending on how good your audio was on set when you were doing the song playback. So I used a portable Bluetooth speaker and I always keep the Bluetooth speaker very close to the camera. And the reason for this is literally for the sole purpose of my multicam clip, just being a one and done, when I click create multicam, it just pre-syncs everything perfectly and does it really quickly. And the reason why it's so quick and why it just rendered out in literally like maybe 20 seconds is because I had my Bluetooth speaker sitting right next to the camera for every single performance scene and I had the Bluetooth speaker blasted at 100% volume. What this does is the audio coming through to the camera is being picked up so loudly that it's much easier for Final Cut Pro 10 to pick up where to sync all of the different clips as well as the mastered audio. So it just makes Final Cut Pro 10's life so much easier when you are actually playing the audio really, really loud on set. It's just way easier for that multicam clip to sync everything up. So your multicam clip is gonna be placed now right here. So I'm gonna go back up to the top here and I'm gonna click on my project, okay? So I have the project right here. I double clicked on it. And now I'm gonna go to the multicam. I'm gonna drag it in and I'm gonna show you really quickly what the multicam clip just did. So if you double click on your multicam and the master version of the audio is perfectly synced 
with every single performance scene that we film. Now, if you do want to check out um, a specific clip, maybe you have to manually sync a few clips because it just didn't work for whatever reason. All you would do is click on the little window right here. It looks like a little computer screen. And now you are currently viewing this clip right here. Okay, we're currently viewing this clip. And then all you would do is click on the audio track right here. So this enables the raw audio from this clip. Now to manually sync, you would click on this and then you would also click on the audio right here, which is the mastered audio track, okay? And then you'd go through and you try to manually sync it on the multicam, try to move the actual clips rather than moving this clip at the top, AKA the mastered audio. You're trying to sync every single clip to the mastered audio, not the mastered audio to the actual clips, if that makes sense. Now, if you wanna back out of your multicam clip and go back to your timeline, you're gonna simply click on this little arrow right here. It's a left arrow, and this takes you back to the timeline story, okay? So we're gonna get rid of this black space because I was obviously recording for a long period of time at some point. Um, so we're gonna get rid of that. We don't really need that. And I may as well just trim the top there. Next up, what we're gonna do is we are going to find our mastered audio track, which is right here, and I'm gonna pull it into the timeline. So now we have the mastered audio inside of the timeline. Now this is the final step to setting up your multicam. So we're gonna zoom in all the way, and we're actually gonna look at the waveform. So obviously right here on the actual multicam clip, this is when the song drops, right? So we're gonna zoom in, and we're gonna match up these waveforms together. So it's a mastered audio with a mastered audio inside of the multicam clip. Okay. So we're going to really try to get this right on the dot. I like to go at the beginning of any of those yellow little peaks and that looks pretty synced up to me. So next up, what we're going to do is mute the multicam completely to zero, 100% to zero. And we're going to keep the mastered audio on the bottom. Now we're going to zoom out and we're going to shift over and this is where the song will begin. Now, every single clip in this multicam should be synced up. So the beautiful thing about multicam clips, let's say I wanna change this clip to a different clip, to a different performance scene. Boom, boom, boom. See what's happening? How easy this is? Now, if you shoot more than eight to nine performance scenes and you wanna access the other, however many performance scenes you have, you have to go up to view. This is the annoying part about multicams. You're going to click on your multicam, go up to view, click on angles, and it's going to show your angles. So right now we're in multicam clips. What is it? Three, six, seven, eight. So one through eight. So we're going to click on the little cube at the bottom here, and this is going to show you and bring up the remaining seven performance scenes that we shot. So now I can back out of this by clicking view and angles and one thing to take note of guys here when you are editing music videos with a multicam try to back out of this screen right here before you click play because otherwise it's going to try to play every single one of these clips at once and your computer is going to go absolutely bonkers and it final cut could actually crash if you do do that so just try to click on view and then click angles and that will toggle that off and you're good to go and now we can sift through all of our other performance scenes that we shot throughout this entire music video, okay? Super, super easy. The first thing that I do with any music video shoot, okay, is I edit all of the performance scenes. I pick the best of the best performance scenes and I edit the performance scenes first before I even toss the intro B-roll. I literally go through and I edit the performance scenes. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. See, I might go through and change a lot of this. Now, if you guys wanna watch the full music video and what came out of this editing tutorial, I'll leave that in the link description, but um, this is where you have to get a little creative. So do we wanna start with the girls in it? Do we wanna start with just solo shots? I think that the intro should have a lot of shots of the girls and the models and slow motion shots of the artist pimped in. And then I think we go into solo shots and maybe after like 20 seconds, we start to slowly introduce the female subject. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Let's try that, okay? So we're gonna go in here and we're going to make a little cut here, okay? So now we're gonna find a performance scene. We're gonna start cutting it up. All right, so this is where you start singing. So the other thing too is you want your performance scenes to cut 
to when the artist actually starts another line in his song, okay? So we would, don't want to do this. Check this out. So right there is where we want to want to clip this, okay? So we'd want to clip this like around here so it switches like this and I'll show you. See how it just seamlessly goes into the next line. All right, so we're going to go through and start editing through this. When an artist finishes their lyric for that line, I like to switch immediately to the next clip and then continue on with the lyric. But right here, because of the shot, I actually really like that you can visually see the artist finish his line, but continue to look into the camera. And I think it's because of this shot, because he's just looking straight faced into the camera, which this is a shot that I absolutely love. Because you know, I had a light actually sitting to the left side of the artist's face, and it was directly to the side of him, creating this really harsh drop off right here. So it creates a more emotional and dark vibe to this clip, okay? So we're gonna back out here and show you. So then when we transition out of this scene, I'm changing it and transitioning from the snare. So when it hits that snare right after he's done singing, that's when I transition to the next clip. All right guys, so another thing to mention here too is be conscious of the clips that you are actually editing into the music video. So right here, Pimpton like adjusts his hair, obviously to make sure that he's looking good for this performance scene. Should this have been done before the performance scene? Probably, but I mean, we're only 20 seconds in and he's a very experienced artist too. He's shot a ton of music videos in his career. So he knows that, you know, five seconds fixing his hair is more worth it than stopping the scene to fix his hair. But the bottom line here is to just not include that clip in the music video because, you know, he's fixing his hair. It's not actually like, like part of the music video. So try to look out for these things. Some people were like, keep parts of like songs where like the artist maybe trips up on their words or the artist like is looking around or doing something completely unrelated to the performance scene so try to snip those parts out and you can clearly see it in the edit like it's hard to miss these things but it's just something to take note of when you are editing music videos um i'm about a minute and a half into cutting up the performance scenes and i'm going to continue doing this for the entire three minutes of the song now because i'm not editing this full music video for you guys like in real time because that would literally be like a two hour uh, behind the scenes video um, i'm going to start adding b-roll and just showing you guys my thought process of adding b-roll because i feel like we've kind of gone through you know when i like to make cuts for my performance scenes and you guys probably have a pretty good idea of my workflow on performance scenes cuts. I'm literally just waiting for him to, you know, say another line of the song with every line of the song, every bar of the song. I'm just switching to a different camera angle. And um, I try not to, you know, switch it up too much in terms of location. So we want to obviously have like a skeleton shot. I personally feel that the skeleton shots for this performance scene are going to be these scenes right here where we're inside of this really cool vintage room, as well as a mixture of skeleton shots from this um, scene right here. I just really, really like this scene. I think the lighting is good. After color grading it, it's going to look beautiful. Now by skeleton shots, I mean that those are two performance scenes that you can always refer back to and cut to, whether you're at the 10 second mark of the song or you're at the you know tail end of the song you can always resort back to those skeleton shots now if you don't have a skeleton shot picked out like one or two of them picked out what ends up happening in your music video is that your music video becomes repetitive meaning that you are using your performance scenes from all of your locations just back to back. And what ends up happening is your music video becomes very predictable. Now, obviously this music video, it seems to be predictable right now, but we have so many B-roll scenes to cut from that look so beautiful that honestly, this music video is probably gonna have more B-roll shots than performance scenes. And that's totally okay. And this is why I always say too, that it is good to mix up, you know, have a happy medium of b-roll shots and performance scenes if you can do 50 50 on the b-roll and performance that is perfect you can still get away with it with like a 60 40 70 30 split on performance scenes to b-roll but i highly suggest that every single location that you're at 
try shooting b-roll shots as well. It doesn't hurt to have and you will always find a part in the song where you can add b-roll clips in. So right now I'm going to scroll to the beginning. So here we're going to do a little intro b-roll um, kind of sequence. Now we have some really cool b-roll shots here, okay? So I really like the shadows here and what I'm doing is I'm just skimming through anything that looks good, I'm dragging and dropping, okay? Dragging and dropping, anything that I see looks good. This is sick, drag and drop, mute, drag and drop, mute. Like this is the shot right here, this is sick. Boom, like on the other side of the curtain, super, super dope. And by the way guys, if you wanna see the full behind the scenes of how we shot this music video, that is also in the description of this video. So I think that's cool, three of those is cool. We might bring in some more of those a little later on. Now let's go through here. So this is sick right here, okay? When the model's doing some different posing here, like this is awesome. We might bring in one of those, we might. We might bring this in a little later, I don't know yet though. Okay, now we're gonna scroll up a bit. Now I wanna find some stuff. I used a Prism Lens FX Kaleidoscope filter and I think that these shots are just unbelievable. Um, this scene, we kind of played around with a mirror. So we might use this. Toss a kaleidoscope on there as well. Oh, I really like when she looks up at the camera. Maybe that's like a good time to kind of make that drop. So when she looks in the camera and then the beat drops. And we have some super underexposed silhouette shots as well, which are pretty sick. Uh, we might leave those. Let's see how this looks right now, okay? So another thing too is when you're going through your B-roll clips, make sure you mute all of them because we obviously don't want audio coming out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this kaleidoscope shot, okay? Keep in mind guys that like, whether it's YouTube, social media content, TikTok content, or a music video, you still want to reel the viewer in, right? The person on the other side of the screen, you want them watching the full music videos. And that first 15 to 30 seconds matters a lot, especially on YouTube. Because if you keep people hooked for 30 seconds, chances are they're gonna stick around for, you know, a minute, 30 seconds, two minutes, three minutes for the entire music video. At the end of the day, that only just runs up the audience retention on the back end of that music video, and it recommends it to more people. And if this music video ends up getting recommended to a lot of people and gets a lot of views, chances are that artist is gonna hire you again. So it's not only about just getting in, getting paid, and producing the content, you wanna also keep these things in mind as an editor that you want to create shots that will keep people engaged. So we're gonna open this up with a slow motion kaleidoscope shot. Okay, so this is shot in 4K 60 FPS. So I slowed this clip by 50% and I'm gonna stretch this out to 40, okay? So this is at 40% speed in 60 FPS shot at 1 over 125 shutter speed. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna click on this clip, I'm gonna go Command C, so that copies. Now I'm gonna click on this clip, this clip, this, 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 all the intro clips, Command Shift V, and this pace all of the attributes. Most importantly, the retiming. So I don't have to go back and you know, slow motion every single one of these intro scenes by to 40% speed because I just did that by command shift Ving and pasting all of the retiming attributes from this clip to the rest of the intro B-roll shot. So these are all now pre-slow motion and ready to actually add in. Now next up what I wanna do is I'm actually going to extend this out, this main clip out, which by the way, if you want to disable clips, you click V on your keyboard and it will disable. So it just creates a black background, which is what we want. So next up what I'm gonna do is actually pull the main timeline back by just like half a second, just so it, there's a little bit of wiggle room before the song actually starts. That's perfect. Now we're gonna open with this kaleidoscope shot. Now we can do it one of two ways here, okay? We can either open it with no fade, fade in or we can do a fade in. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's add a fade to black and basically if you want to fade this in we're going to extend this out click on the transition and we're going to drag the midpoint to zero and the hold to zero as well way better my opinion way better while editing this intro sequence we want to edit to the beat of the song okay right there that little ding 
delete that there and we're gonna pull in the next clip right there so it seamlessly transitions to the next scene, all right? Again, guys, editing to the beat of the song. I'm gonna make another cut here. And now I'm gonna bring in these uh, blue shots with the curtain, okay? Let's bring in another shot of the curtain, keep it blue. Get movement in there. Again, cannot express this enough, editing to the beat of the song. And now the thing with this is now, this is just me doing my own creative thing, but because we were cutting to the beat, like every time there was that sound that came up that we used to cut to a new clip, people are now watching the video. Now these are all things to keep in mind, right? We're at 10 seconds and we've shown one, two, three, four, five clips that are cutting to the beat of the song. So people are now, you know, expecting something to change. So now before the actual song beat drops, I'm gonna actually skip over a beat for this last B-roll shot, okay? So this clip is gonna be a little bit of a longer clip and it's gonna end when the model looks up at the camera, okay? So now I wanna find a shot of Pimpton, of the artist, okay? So we want a B-roll shot of him. You know what? Instead of having a shot of the artist, I'm gonna actually have another B-roll shot of one of the girls. So. I'm gonna go back to this clip, but without the kaleidoscope. And I believe the model actually pushes her arms out to the sides. And I'd like to do a little speed ramp on that. Yeah, like this is gonna be sick. So we're gonna pull this in, mute this, and we're gonna trim this up a little bit. You know what? I lied about <laughs> extending that clip. We are actually gonna shorten it a bit because we're gonna do a little speed ramp on the beat drop. I think that's gonna be way sicker. So to speed ramp, I wanna speed ramp to from here and end it right before her hands touch the mirror, okay? So we're gonna speed ramp literally, it's gonna be a very short and sweet speed ramp, okay? Pull this here. Let's see how this looks. little too slow so I'm going to speed it up a little more it's gonna be a very quick speed round now we hear a bunch of little tiny snares and I can see it in the waveform here so what I'm gonna do is actually make cuts of the girls to each and every one of these little snares and then we're gonna open up with the artist actually singing the song so um, now we're just gonna have to pull a bunch of different clips of now these can be super random just because um you know they're gonna be so quick but still try your best to find like actual good clips um this will actually be pretty cool too um these like statue type shots we're gonna actually implement for the really quick snares now if you are doing something like this and you want to make sure that all of the clips are of the same um length you can just you know, trim one to size and then drag the other one on top, trim it to size and then place it right next to it. And that should be good. All right, so now I'm gonna go through, start adding some more B-roll shots. So I kind of want to like obviously implement the female talent as much as possible because we did get so many really good shots of them. Um, I'm gonna keep the silhouette shots for a little later on, but I really do want to bring in these kaleidoscope filters like these are so sick like these kaleidoscope filter shots just turned out amazing so i'm going to toss it in so what we're actually going to do is kind of chop different parts of the kaleidoscope in there so i'm going to back this out So I might actually bring in those silhouettes. I lied. I'd see, guys, the, the editing process, like unless you have like a time code sheet to every single clip um, that you want in specific areas, I like to just get creative with my music video editing. I don't like to overcomplicate things. And I just like to, 
you know, be in a good creative mental mind state when I am editing music videos. Like yesterday, I was so swamped with a million things and I really wanted to get to this music video, but I just wasn't in the right mental state. Like I was just stressed out. And I'm not saying that, you know, you should put off music videos or edits that, like for like a week or two just because you're not in the right state. Like get to them in a timely manner. But you know, for something as creative as music video editing, I feel like, you know, my office has to be nice and clean. I have to be like, like cut out like three or four hours of my night and just like, you know, like be sipping on some wine or something like, you know, like just be in a vibe and really be in the moment when editing music videos, because I feel like that's when the best edits come out, at least for me, that's kind of like my whole vibe when I want to edit music videos. If I'm not feeling it though, I will sleep on it. Or if I finish the edit and I bang it out of the park, I always sleep on the edit because whenever I actually sleep on an edit and come back to it the next day, there's so many things that I end up changing and just it, it makes the music video so much better. So that is something to kind of take note of. That's kind of my whole workflow. So you guys kind of get the point of like what I'm doing here. I showed you how I chop my B-roll shots for the intro, which I honestly do for the rest of the music video as well. It's like very simple. Like I'm always bringing in my B-roll shots to the beat of the music or whenever the artist kind of stops singing and maybe it's just like the actual like instrumental playing, then I do again, bring in the B-roll shots. Um, if it's a really, really good performance scene, if I find a really fire performance scene for a snippet or for a bar or two, like I will use a performance scene 100%. I personally love implementing performance scenes, but because we got so many good B-roll clips, I just really wanted to implement a lot of B-roll shots in this music video. Even if they come off as a little repetitive, I think that just like that shows the whole vibe of this shoot and this music video. So you guys get the idea of my whole thought process behind adding performance scenes, cutting performance scenes, adding B-roll, as well as adding intro B-roll. Now I kind of want to just slightly touch on color grading here, okay? And I'm gonna do this the simple way. I don't know if I'm actually gonna color this whole music video this way, but I'm gonna do it the simple way for the sake of this tutorial because there are probably a lot of beginners watching this and I wanna simplify things for you guys because you don't have to be a professional colorist or be color grading you know, videos for years to be able to color a music video. You can do it very simple, okay? Okay, so we're gonna start with this super underexposed image. So I purposely underexposed this and I put an Aperture Amran P60C panel light behind here and it's literally just lighting the backs of all of the models as they kind of like crawl around this ottoman, okay? And I did that on purpose because I wanna create silhouettes of everybody. So I'm gonna drag Color Finale on top of here. You don't have to use Color Finale. It is about, I think, 60 to $100, um, but it is a LUT management system. So you can keep all of your LUTs in Color Finale and it just keeps everything nice and organized and it's really easy to access. So just for fun, I want to pull over the Alexa um, Log C to Rec 709 over top of this and just see what happens, okay? So we are getting um, that silhouette, which I like. So we're gonna go Command 7, and we're gonna see what's happening here in our waveform. So obviously, what are we picking up here? Reading waveforms 101 here for you guys. So right here, we have a little bit of a hot spot, right? So what, do we, what is this picking up? That's picking up this girl right here, and see this really hot spot on her right here? That's what this waveform is right here, okay? Now if we look, we see some red coming in from right here and some purple magentas and red on the very, very left of the image. So on the very left of the image, that is picking up this little piece of magenta. Now I'll have to do something about that, probably crop in. I did not notice that when we were shooting because it was so damn dark. And then this red peak right here is picking up the exit sign, which we can easily fix by simply cropping in, which I was gonna honestly probably do regardless and play around with some keyframing and whatnot here, but look what happens when we punch in. We actually, you can see that the red and the magenta is like completely going away from our waveform diagram there. So um, yeah, that's cool. Next up, the RGB overlay 101. How to read this chart. What the heck is going on here? What do these things mean? If you go under the zero, if you bring your shadows under the zero like so, so I'm pumping my shadows down below the zero, I'm crushing the shadows. So now we're kind of seeing a silhouette, but not enough. So I wanna make sure that my shadows are actually sitting above the zero line. I'm gonna bring them up just a tad bit. Midtones is gonna be everything in the middle here, and that'll add a little bit of contrast to your image. So I'm gonna bring this down like that. And our highlights obviously is gonna be the brightest parts of our image. So 
I'm going to bring this up um, and over exaggerate it actually. I'm going to overexpose it a bit um, because I want to be able to actually see the detail in the um, silhouettes. And then I'm going to bring my shadows back down ever so slightly just so we can see that there are the girls dancing around here. And we're going to play this back. Yeah, so that's cool. I mean, like, I'm going to play around with that. Um, you know, mess around with my hue versus saturation. You know, I can pump up the saturation a bit too, um, which also looks pretty sweet. So that's kind of cool. It's just a cool little B-roll shot that we shot. Okay, so now we're going to look at something with, um, you know, a regular key light on our subject. So again, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go through and actually color grade everything like properly and not just use a LUT. But I'm going to drag just like a Rec 709 LUT over top. If I toggle this, we were actually shooting with like a black drape in the background, okay? So in order to get rid of that, which I want to get rid of that, I'm going to actually go into my color wheels and I'm going to drag my shadows down. Now what that's going to do is obviously I'm going to lose detail in the artist's hair and his hat, but I am getting rid of the crinkles in that background completely, okay? By just crushing the shadows, I'm barely going, I'm just barely above that zero line there. Mid-tones, we can, you know, bring up just a slight bit, bring those shadows back down just a little bit. Highlights, we can bring up ever so slightly. Highlights, we're gonna bring up right here. Now we're gonna bring our shadows back down just a little bit. This looks pretty contrasty, but that is okay. Now our highlights, we are going to just bump up a little bit, bump up our shadows a bit, mid-tones not so much. And that is looking pretty good as is right there. Now, what I wanna do next, go into my Hoover saturation, and let's just desaturate this orange just like a slight amount, okay? We're gonna desat the orange just a little bit. So normally I like to go for that desaturated look on a lot of my clips, but I really like how we're in a little bit of like a spotlight scene here and the shadows are crushed, but the orange pops really nice. So I actually kind of want to keep it as is. I think this looks hard. Next scene we have here is now the front facing shot. So as you can see, I did get the light in the shot. So we're going to simply just crop in a little bit, make sure there is healthy headspace on the top, which there is. I might even bring in just a little more. I like that. And I'm gonna control shift V and paste the attributes from the last clip on here and just see how it looks, okay? So obviously it looks a little hot on his face, which obviously shows we are overexposed. Anything over this 100 line, we're overexposed. So I'm gonna bring this down, check out what happens. Now we start to, we go from like this to this we get a nice soft light okay next up i'm going to lift those shadows a bit and just see where we can kind of black out that background i want this to be a very very dark scene like that is what we're going for i'm going to bump up the mid-tones a bit just to bring in some more color on his um, sweatshirt as well as his skin tones because before it just looked a little too desaturated so we're going to bump it up a little bit i think that looks really good um, let's take a look like that looks solid see where I place this light as well You'll see in the behind the scenes video is on a 45 degree angle above his head and I was pointing an aperture 300 d2 with a light dome 2 softbox directly at him from a 45 degree angle And what this did is created a little bit of a slight Rembrandt light our fall off is really soft and we get that Rembrandt light right underneath his eye on the opposite side and it's on the shadowed side of his face. I think that looks really good. I really like how it's just nice and dark and you can still see his mouth moving. I think that looks great. So now moving on to the shots of the kaleidoscope. So again, I'm going to pull over a Rec 709 LUT on here. Okay, so this we're going to play around with skin tones a little more because the skin tones are really what pops the most in this image. So Command 7 again, let's see what's going on with our waveforms. Check it out. We'll have this just below 100 because we don't want to overexpose her back, right? Or her, her arm and shoulder. So we're going to bring this down to about there. Shadows, no need to really crush them too much. Let's go to like right here, but we're going to bring those mid-tones down, okay? Let's actually bring those shadows down a bit more. Really kind of contrast this out. Now we're going to add a little bit of highlight punch, some mid-tone punch on the skin tones, and see the shadows a little too much. 
Actually, that's good. Kind of like it. We just don't want to go too much where she starts to get orange. We want to scale it back and find a nice little happy medium there. That looks really, really solid. Now I can go into my hue versus saturation and I can click on her skin tone and I can kind of bring it up a little bit. It's looking a little orange, but we can bump it just a tiny, tiny bit. I think this looks really good like that. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much a rundown of how I edit music videos. Obviously, I didn't go from very beginning to very end um, just because like this, that would be like a few hours long in terms of a tutorial length and not just, uh, yeah, nobody would sit through that. So now, guys, if you want to take after my color grading technique that I just showed you where you just slap a Rec. 709 LUT on there and then make your minor adjustments. I do sell a Rec. 709 LUT on my online shop. The link to that is in the description. And guys, the most valuable thing that I sell is my online music video course, the Learn Freelance Filmmaking Music Video course with over 130 music video lessons tailored for freelancers. It was created by a freelancer for freelancers. You guys want to check that out again link in the description down below last but not least i do have a free music video ebook download if you guys want to cop that and learn a few things about music videos i offer it completely for free again the link to that is in the description down below now if you made it this far into the video and you want to see how i actually shot this music video step by step you can click this video right over here it's a full breakdown of how we shot this video how we lit everything up and did really cool lighting techniques and obviously now you've seen how we edited it so now you can see how we shot the whole video so i'll catch you guys in the behind the scenes video peace